Hello, I'm Blaine Griffin, marine biologist at the University of South Carolina. I'm here on the New Hampshire coast at Odeorn State Park. I've been coming to this beach for the last 10 years in order to study interactions between two species of invasive crab. One of these species is the European green crab. It arrived here about 200 years ago in New Jersey and has since established itself along the northeast coast of the United States. The second species is the Asian shore crab. It arrived here again in New Jersey about 20 years ago and has since steadily marched up the coast. As it has moved up the coast, it has progressively eliminated the European green crab from beach after beach. My research then has been to examine the interactions between these two species in order to understand just why this species replacement is occurring. Previous work suggests that this species replacement may be occurring because the Asian shore crab consumes larvae of the green crab as they settle out of the water column. However, work conducted in my lab suggests that this may only be part of the story. The European green crab usually eats things like mussels and snails. However, we have demonstrated that in the presence of the Asian shore crab, the green crab consumes many fewer mussels and snails and instead consumes primarily algae, even when mussels and snails are readily available. In fact, the more Asian shore crabs there are, the fewer mussels the green crab consumes. While we have some ideas, the exact reason for this change in diet is still unknown. The problem with this shift from a diet of animals to a diet of algae is that while Carcinus may be able to survive on algae, it doesn't reproduce very well. In fact, the less animal tissue it consumes, the fewer eggs it produces. It's not hard to find this new invader from Asia. Look under nearly any rock here on the beach and you're sure to find at least one. And sometimes three. So as you can see, eliminating this invasive species from this beach really isn't possible given the large number of individuals that occur here and their ability to avoid being captured. And if you think that I just happened to select a rock that had more crabs than usual, here's another. And another. And another. And another. You beginning to get the idea? Take the one, three to 20 individuals that exist underneath each single rock and multiply that by the number of rocks seen here on this beach alone and you begin to get some idea of the scale of this problem. Ultimately, combining predation by the shore crab on juvenile green crabs as they settle on the beach together with the inability of adult green crabs to reproduce after they've shifted their diet from eating animals to eating algae may provide the one-two punch that's just too much for the green crab to overcome. In the end, we're left with a beach that's dominated by the Asian shore crab. While the Asian shore crab appears to have the upper hand on this coast, the European green crab has invaded numerous areas around the globe. In fact, it has now invaded every continent in the world except for Antarctica. The movement and establishment of invasive species into new areas is one of the most widespread environmental problems today. Understanding the factors that lead to the success or failure of these two invasive crabs at this site could provide important information to help us understand invasive species in other areas.